something interesting here now is in case you know i have these four uh, these four values and i just want to add a time column to it maybe i know that uh, every every value in every row in this table uh, is from a particular timestamp so effectively all i have to do is just add a date column to it and based on the number of entries you have you can just generate a date range for it uh, this is just a pretty trivial example on how moldable these per, uh, these data frames are in general um so effectively what you would have to do is just this yeah so now you have the new data frame um yeah so this was your initial data frame and now you have a time column also associated with it and basically this is this is just with the example that uh, in case i knew that um this was increasing minute by minute so every entry in this particular table represented a new minute uh so all i had to do is like just put in that time stamp with uh, uh just create like a column uh, of those rate ranges and add that column in and uh, so this in place is a pretty interesting operation over here in place equal to true that means it does make changes in memory uh and on that particular value uh so that the next time you do access that uh, variable you do get the changed data frame um if in place was equal to false then effectively ahead this would just get uh, the new time wouldn't show up it, it it would just show up once like just as a temporary instance and something something very interesting about uh, the data frame create by the way so you have very um, usable modes in them like the low memory node a uh, mode in case uh, you have problems with memory or so so effectively it just makes it incredibly easy to use now let's look at the next thing that is indexing yeah so here we have indexing and uh, what is basically happening over here is you have the same data frame being created earlier which is this and i added a new instance to it uh, a new index to it abcd can be anything you can pre compute it and be extremely smart about it and uh, so indexes are incredibly valuable because um they tend to be like for larger data frames they tend to give you faster access times and uh, a lot more scope for manipulation overall um so over here what i've done is when i was creating this data frame i just added an index column to it and after that now in case i wanted a sub df that is just values between a and b so i just uh, selected the rows I, that i wanted and i just wanted to see maybe temperature and uh, the instrument in that uh, so that's the column selection and this is due to the loc function here so the loc allows you to select by instance the i loc allows you to select by numbers um by index sorry loc allows you to select by index and uh, so this is just a print of that um and now just like any database uh you want to merge data and so while merging data what is effectively happening is um you have two tables and you can have a join in it uh and since it's structured so you have a bunch of rules in it like left right inner outer um so over here i have two tables 
one is the status table this is the one that we saw and i want to do a very simple operation here is for every robot i want to find out who is the operator responsible so effectively over here i've just mapped every robot to every instrument to an operator um in these two i'm creating two data uh, so i'm creating a data frame out of each and uh, they will go through a join uh, it's a simple join and um, over here so now it will go through a left join because what i wanted is a left join it can be anything you want just an example um so you have to specify which table is the left which which table is the right um which column you want to merge on and how you want to merge it and you can have a uh, merge and you can just print out the merge underscore df of it So over here we have um, the status that I am trying to merge with my operator, and now you have a new merge table. Effectively, so now you have the instrument charge, temperature, and operator. Um, Danfo makes it incredibly easy to use um, other forms of input also. you can just uh, read from a csv directly or read json um you can read from an excel directly um and that is effectively you just have to put a link to your uh, particular uh, object that you want to read uh, its location uh, or file file and um yeah uh it gives you a bunch of operations after this also that we'll cover up uh in the following videos and uh, then you can export it also into any kind of data that you want which will also be covered in the series so this was pretty much uh, everything on just getting started with danfo what danfo is basically and uh, things around it um i hope you found this to be a very useful tutorial and i'll see you in the next part of the series